this program called ARIS, the amateur radio on the International Space Station, and its purpose is to do exactly what we're doing here, is uh, to have the astronauts currently on station be able to take questions from students. Uh, you know, answering a wide range of questions. And uh, we, we're doing this through ham radio. The, um, although right now this looks like a regular microphone, we are connected to the ham radio station here at Copernic. And using our equipment, we're gonna talk to the ham radio station that is currently on the International Space Station. There's no other NASA connection. We have to wait for the ISS to, to get above the horizon in order for us to communicate. So let me explain a little bit about what's going on here. This is a, a picture of Colonel Jeff Williams. He's the astronaut scheduled to speak with us this afternoon. And that's actually in, in his position um, at the ham radio station on the ISS. Up here you'll see a map of the, of the world. This disk right here, this white disk, that is what's called the satellite footprint. That's how much of the Earth the ISS can see. These white dots here are the path that it's gonna take. And this little X right up here is where Copernic is. So any, any station, any ham radio station that is inside this white disk, is able to hear the International Space Station, and if the ISS has their uh, uh, equipment running, they can talk to us. And so uh, in a few moments, uh, probably in about uh, less than five minutes, this disc should come over here. Um, and I want to thank also the members of the Binghamton Amateur Radio Association. This is a ham radio club who has their home here, and they uh, are providing us the uh, uh, some technical uh, expertise. Uh, this is Steve Olson, and his call sign is uh, AG2L. Uh, we also had uh, Ed Lanky, an N2BHD, uh, Ford, uh, Ford Drake, AB2HS, and Herb Flint, uh, KB2CMB. Uh, all were helping us get all of our equipment uh, tested out, making sure that it was running. November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra. November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra. This is Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo, Oscar, K2, ZRO. Do you copy? Over. Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo, Oscar. This is November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra. Have you loud and clear? Over. Okay, great. We're ready for our first question. Over. This is Dominic. We are building robots here at camp. What sort of robots do you use and how do they help you? Over. Dominic, uh, the main uh, robot that we have is the robotic arm outside and we use it to build the space station. We currently use it to sustain the space station. In fact, we use it today and tomorrow to put on a new part outside. Over. This is Olivia. Has anything broken on the space station and how do you fix it? Over. This is Isaac. What interests or activities do you have when you were young that helped you qualify for your current position? Over. Isaac, when I was young, my favorite uh, topics became math and science. And in particular, my interest in science uh, led up me on the path to qualify me for my current position. Over. This is Ryan. How long have you been in the space station? Over. Ryan, I've been here this time since March 18th. Uh, this is my fourth trip to the space station. Over. This is Stephanie. How long did it take you to get used to being in microgravity? And what are some of the effects from microgravity you have noticed? Over. Stephanie, it takes most people a few days to get used to being in microgravity, uh, to get over the, maybe a little bit of sickness, and also just to get used to working in a place where everything floats over. This is Summer. Do you have internet up into space? Over. Summer, we do have very limited internet. We can log in once in a while, but it's very slow. So, for example, I don't stream any video on the internet. Over. This is Colin. What's the weather like in space? Over. 
Carla, when we talk space weather, we talk usually uh, radiation storms from the sun. Uh, but the weather, the Earth weather that we see every day is all below us, and it's beautiful from here. Over. This is Thomas. How do you sleep without floating all over? Over. Thomas, we each have a, a small crew quarters, and I have my sleeping bag strapped to the wall in the, in the crew quarters, and I zip it up, and it contains me uh, attached to the wall. Over. This is Kayla. What did you have to study in school to become an astronaut? Over. I studied uh, mostly math and science and engineering. I have uh, degrees in aeronautical engineering, and that qualified me for this job. Over. This is Peyton. Do you have children? If so, how do you communicate with them when you are away? Over. I do have children. I also have grandchildren. I have two sons. They're both married, and one of them has four children of his own. So I communicate with them via telephone and also via email. And once a week or so, we have a video teleconference. Over. This is Ethan. Are you working on any research or science projects on the space station? Over. Ethan, we're working on many science and research projects from all the disciplines of science to include studying ourselves, doing studies of the human body, of weightlessness, but also things like cells and plants and material science and many other things. Over. This is Nick. I've heard training to be an astronaut can be very difficult. What was the toughest aspect of training in your opinion? Over. Well, many things that, that we train are, are, are uh, difficult. Doing spacewalks, that's training difficult. In fact, we're going to do a spacewalk tomorrow that we have trained for. Probably the toughest part, though, is all the travel to Russia, Japan, and Germany, as well as Houston, to get all of the training done. Over. This is Samuel. Have you ever seen a UFO? Over. Samuel, I've never seen a UFO. I haven't seen anything that can't be explained. Uh, those are mostly science fiction and fairy tale stories that people like to propagate over. This is Parker. What do you eat when you're in space? How do you pack the food to take it into space? And does it all need to be freeze dried? Over. We have lots of food and a lot of it is dried and some of it comes in packets ready to eat where you just heat it up, open the packet and, uh, uh, and then eat it. And other food comes in cans uh, and other packages similar. So we have, a, we have great food on board. Over. This is Nick. What do you and the other astronauts do for fun during your downtime? Over. We might enjoy time around the meal. We spend a lot of time in the window taking pictures of the Earth. Uh, we might spend some downtime calling home or family or friends uh, or emails to family and friends. Over. This is Seth. At what age did you first become interested in space? Over. Well, I think I was certainly interested in it by age 12, uh, but I didn't realize that I could maybe have a chance to uh, participate in space exploration until I was closer to 20. Over. This is Jacob. What languages do you speak? Over. We speak Russian and English on board, and we use both languages every day. Over. This is Wyatt. What is your day like in outer space? Over. Hello, Wyatt. Uh, that day, we work a 24-hour day up here. We wake up typically 6 in the morning. We're, we're going to work at 7.30 or 7.15 or so. We work till about 7 in the evening and then have the evening free for, for dinner. And while now we get a lunch break. We usually have weekends off as well. Over. Uh, Colonel Williams, this is Drew Desker. I'm director of Copernic. Uh, we've actually uh, gone through all of our questions, which is great. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, ask you if you have a moment to describe. I understand that you and uh, and uh, and Kate have uh, an important EVA tomorrow. Could you uh, give us a little detail about that, please? Over. Absolutely. We've been uh, preparing for it over the last couple of weeks. We did the final reviews today. The suits are ready. We're going outside early. About your time, it'll be a little, a little close to noon or so, maybe a little before your time. We'll go outside. We'll spend six and a half hours outside. The primary task will be attaching a docking adapter on the very front end of the space station to prepare for future commercial vehicles, which are scheduled to, uh, to uh, start flying the space station within the next couple, three years or so. Okay, well, we uh, really appreciate uh, your time uh, uh, talking to us uh, today. We'd like to have our camp of uh, 46 students uh, just stand up, and I want you to say thank you, Colonel Williams. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Colonel Williams! 
Over. You're very welcome, and uh, it's a great program. It looks like you're in today. I'm sure you're having a lot of fun up there, and uh, perking your interest in, in science, engineering, and technology. So well done. It's great talking to you today. Over. Everyone SS, this is Kilo 2, Zulu Romeo Oscar, 73s, and good luck on your EVA tomorrow. Kilo 2, Zulu uh, Romeo Oscar, this is November Alpha 1 SS. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Over and out, actually.